Hello and welcome back to the PTZ Optics Computer Programming for Robotic Camera course. In this video, we're going to look at Python as a computer programming language to operate PTZ robotic cameras. Python has really become one of the industry's most popular programming languages. It's been around for actually over 20 years and Python has just become super popular. It's going to be great for issuing our HTTP CGI commands to control our PTZ cameras. And let's go over some basics really quickly before we jump into programming. Now, by the way, I have this written down here. Python was made public by a developer named Guido von Rusum in 1989, and he actually named it after his favorite movie slash show, Monty Python's Flying Circus. If you're a fan, it might make you chuckle a little bit. It's a funny joke. But yeah, that's how Python got its start over 20 years ago now. Now, the benefits of Python is that it's very easy to read and there's short lines of code. So we can focus on the problem and not really have to worry about the syntax. Python also can be installed on almost any platform, including Mac, Windows, Linux, and even a Raspberry Pi. So you can do a lot of great projects with this software and it's very flexible. Now, the other thing about Python is the code structure. You will notice when we start digging into the code that it's always generally a good a proper idea to start with a hashtag. So the hashtag denotes a comment and the comment, the very first comment should explain exactly what the program was designed to do and hopefully some more information about the variables used. Now the next few lines of code are generally going to denote the uh, upcoming variables and how they're going to be used. You will notice in the PTZ Optics open source code uh, setup for Python that we actually have very good documentation and a lot of comments inside of there because this is really supposed to be a tutorial course. The end application is actually kind of basic compared to how much documentation and commenting is available because we're really just showing you the platform here on how to be successful with Python. And then we're hoping that you're going to use GitHub and you're going to fork the project and create something special and unique that only you could create. So that's almost it. We do need to get Python 3 or greater. So you can go to python.org slash downloads to get that. And it does need to be installed and running on your computer before we can get into the command prompt, find the directories, load up the requirements and get started with really our little server here, our little Python server. So let's get started. It's time to get coding let's jump into it. Hello and welcome back to the Coding Dojo. Here we're gonna talk about Python using the GitHub repository of open source control files for the robotic cameras that we talked about throughout this course. Let's get started. So I've already downloaded the Python files onto my computer and they look like this. It's actually quite uh, well organized here. We've got an index HTML. That's going to be our view of the application. We've got our Python file. There's a license included for our open source code. There's a readme file we're going to take a look at in a second. By the way, that readme file is included in the documentation. I like to have it printed out right next to me. And then finally, there's the requirements which get loaded up into the Python server. So let's take a look at the readme first. So here's our readme, and of course this is available on GitHub, and this is kind of a layout that GitHub uses. The first thing you need to do is get Python 3 and greater. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. We were just over at Node.js downloading that. So let's get rid of that one and download Python. Now I've already got Python on my computer, but I'm going to go ahead and download it to give it a go, show you kind of the process here. So you download it, you install it. It's very straightforward. If you've ever done any Python programming before, you know what this is like. It's very simple. It's not going to allow me to install it since I already have it. All right. Now that we have it, let's go to, not that one, this one here. Um, let's go to the main Python code and take a look at it. So here's the main Python code. And what I'd like to do before we dig into the Python code is I'd like to set up the framework and the server itself just to show that the code's working before we jump right in. So that's the Python code. This is the HTML code. 
and we're going to use all of this with Java, a little JavaScript as well in just a moment. So let's set up our Python working environment by opening up command prompt. I'm going to put command prompt right over here. All right. So the first thing we need to do is point our command prompt to the correct destination for our project. Now I have the folders of this destination right on my um, desktop. So I just have it in a folder called Python. So I just simply need to type in CD desktop. I'll do a capital D just for the heck of it. Desktop slash Python. Boom. Now you can see that we've changed the destination in which we are calling our command prompt to, which is ideal because we next need to install the Python dependencies, which is our, if I bring this down a little bit, actually our requirements.txt file already set and ready for you. So we can go ahead and type in PIP install dash R requirements dot txt boom now this is going to install all of the requirements that have been written out in this file here so that you don't have to deal with it one of them of importance is flask that's kind of the runtime environment that we're working with okay so that is now done we can now set flask Flask is a very popular development tool. Flask development. That's done. And now we can simply type in Python main py. And it's up and running. It's on. And we can see here that it is running at localhost port 5000. So let's just check it real quick before we look into the code. So we'll go into localhost, port 5000. All right, we got it. Now let's give a check. Does it control this camera? This camera is IP address is 63. So we'll type in 192.168.1.63. Let's give a pan speed of 15, a tilt speed of 15, a zoom speed of five, and a focus speed of five. Let's go left. Boom. It's working. Let's slow that pan speed down to two and go right. Ah, very slow. In fact, so slow. I'll turn it up to five because you guys can probably barely even see that. There it goes. She's moving, ladies and gentlemen. Our Python code is working. All right, let's go up to like 12 just because I have ADD. Boom. All right, we got control. Now, these are variables being passed to our action, which is defined by the button. Keep that in mind. In fact, I may go ahead and look at the HTML first. I know you guys are dying to see the Python, but really quickly, just to set the framework here, we have the camera IP address, which is showing up right here. We have all of the pan tilt, zoom, and focus speeds showing up there, right? So this is an HTML form, just breaking down what's inside here so it makes sense. Then we have our buttons here. So these are our, all of our actions, our up, down, left, right buttons. So those are our actions that pass these variables, the IP address and all of the variables that the action can include. So down here, we have a little bit of jQuery and a function that is determining what happens when we fire the action. So we're defining our parameters here, the camera IP address, the action, the speeds, and how all of the values are being parsed out to be included. And we have some else if statements showing what uh, type of post we're going to send over to our request to the backend server. So here we can see we have our Ajax post, which sends a request to the backend server of the information that's coming through the HTML page. All right, let's take a look at the Python. Here we go. All right. 
So Flask is a widely used minimal and flexible Python micro web framework. You can learn more information at, about it on flask.poco.org. Now you can see we have some really well-documented code here. Um, let's open up this one. Here it is here if you want to learn more about it. Web development one drop at a time. And Flask is fun. A lot of people like it. You can fork it on GitHub if you'd like. You can see 42,000 people are using it and lots of people are commenting about it. It's a great way to use Python. It's a micro framework for building web apps. Now from Flask, we're going to import a few things and we're importing libraries that help send HTTP requests. So we can import requests and here we're declaring the values for the Flask instance. So we're opening up a static URL path and a static folder. Now this function below receives a URL string and sends a get HTTP request to the URL. So remember we have a server, Python server running and we're sending information from our HTTP page. Now next we can build URL to create an HTTP CGI command using the data passed to it. And once finished, it will return the processed URL to a function that it is called. So that is this chunk right here. And you can see inside of here that we have uh, up, down, left, right. We have the ability to do home, stop, all of the parameters that are coming in through our HTML, okay? Now next, we are going to render and send the HTML file to the requester. So this is again, the app root and the root returns the send file to HTML, index.html. And a route is the code that we use to associate the type of HTTP request we receive and the URL path pattern. A route allows us to code a specific response for a specific request. In this case, we're looking for any post that was sent with a URL that ending in cam CTRL, which is in the HTTP CGI command. So we go ahead and send the camera control, then we build the CGI URL from the request form and we go ahead and import it. So there you go, guys. That's the Python control. And I hope that you enjoyed that quick little overview of the way that it's all set up and the Python codes that we have available. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. If you've used Python before, I think you'll enjoy the notations and the comments and the documentation that we're providing so that you guys can build something amazing. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I can't wait to see what you guys make. All right, that was Python. It's quite an impressive programming language. I know a lot of professionals that use this programming language, DJs, different people who are creating own custom programs are already using Python. So by understanding how to use uh, Python with a robotic camera, you can easily integrate camera controls into your cool Python applications. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. By the way, there is a great readme. I'm sure you guys went through this on everything. So don't forget to download the documentation, get those readme files, and hopefully this course has helped you with your computer programming. Bye.